Jonathan Kovac with the weather alert across Northeast Ontario. Could Wednesday be snow day number two of 2024? Earlton, by the way, you followed suit after the winter storm watch that upgraded to the warning affected Timmins Capuscasin Monday evening. Earlton, you had three alerts today. Special weather statement, winter storm watch, now just a flash freeze warning. That's all that was on the Environment Canada webpage as of uh, 5 o'clock this afternoon. Your beautiful plus high temperatures will fall or tumble down to minus, lots of minus, very cold. So keep your parkas, gloves, toques, and everything winter related around for the next month or so. Timmins Capus Casing Winter Storm Warning, blowing so poor visibility. The duration is 24 hours. If you do the math, 15 to 20 centimeters of snow, pretending it's 24 centimeters, 24 hours. Mathematically, that's one centimeter per hour for a 24 hour period. To begin with this, the challenges will possibly start with mixed precip and freezing rain or ice accretion first thing Wednesday morning. Then the cool air sinks in as the low kicks off towards the east, towards Quebec. And as soon as that cold air tumbles, the snow will tumble down. So imagine a thick layer of snow on top of a thick layer of ice. Watch out for that. That's what February is all about. Not to mention some thunderstorms today. There's a bout of lightning between Sudbury and Petawawa and a little bit reported between ATC and some flights around the Timmins area between 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock today. Thunderstorms over Toronto with moderate rainfall in February, yes. And the in-flight weather warning was issued for a few hours between Sudbury and Petawawa. Lines stretched out there for some uh, thunderstorms and hail. In fact, some hail reported for some pilots around the Ruin Aranda region as well. Three lows working together over the Great Lakes. The main engine is over Wisconsin. There is the warm, cool air loft rising up towards northeast Ontario. Plus high temperatures here, minus high temperatures over there. The direction to travel for the frontal boundary, <clears throat> pardon me, sinks down towards the south. But a cutoff flow north of Detroit is uplifting the warm air. So you can just imagine what happens in this quadrant. Mixed air, warm, cool air together, that's just the beginning. That's the starting recipe for our soupy winter storm warning. Cloud cover thicker towards the north and towards the west. That's what it looks like north of the frontal boundary. A cold front really makes a big difference in terms of the cloud cover and convective activity as well. This is your mid-afternoon close-up shot of our frontal boundary, which leaves Quebec, crosses over Cochrane, Ontario. It literally sits parallel southwest bound towards Wawa between Highway 101 as well as Highway 11. Lighter clouds south of the Trans-Canada Highway, as soon as you go north of Cap and Hearst, there's a big bulge of cloud cover. That's where the busier cloud cover that is currently producing some snow and poor visibility for the Moose near region. Jet stream shows the cloud cover in motion, all going from west to east. There is a line right there with the cold front north, showing you the active weather north of the cold front. It's pretty much okay here for the areas south of Tibbins towards the U.S. portion of this map. And again, there's some of the darker cloud cover that was affecting the Toronto region with those also incredible thunderstorms for the Toronto region earlier today. Active weather, well, the Weather Network's point cast did pick up a couple cells of rainfall south of Cochrane. There's this line of snow and mixed precips of freezing rain and ice pellets at Capuscase, and they reported about one millimeter of thickness on the indicator, as you've seen with the airport conditions. Most of the precip has taken a break for the first wave ahead of the beginning of our winter storm as it makes its way towards Quebec. So let's look at the current conditions. Let's look at the forecast systems map. For 1 o'clock this afternoon, the forecast, low pressure crosses over the Great Lakes. The barometric pressure is the same as northeast Ontario. Imagine that. Freezing rain ice pellets for cap. Snow blowing snow for the Moosnia region. Low is moving east-southeast at 37 kilometers per hour. By 7 o'clock, this is the evening map, we double the speed. The low pressure picks up some steam as it crosses over the center part of the Great Lakes. Barometric pressure is still shy of 1,000 millibars. It's cloudy for North Bay. It's messy towards Capus Casing and towards Moosonee. Although the Moosonee Automated Weather Station say, uh, says between 5 p.m. and uh, 8 p.m., uh, light, moderate, snow, poor visibility, which is what we're supposed to get in Capus Casing, has calmed down. The overnight systems map, same thing. Low pressure is now... Ontario side sitting over at over Sault Ste. Marie. It slows down just a little bit. Barometric pressure, not much of a change. It still sits there. Same reading as what we have over northeast Ontario. This is your Environment Canada forecast map for a 24 hour glorious period of snowfall. This yellow zone is from Sault Ste. Marie up north towards Attawapiskat, 10 to 15 centimeters, if not more than that. Mixed precip around Sudbury, the, the southern portion of Highway 144, and maybe half the snowfall amount expected for the area of Earlton to Miskaming. Last but not least, folks, this is the regional observations map courtesy of the Weather Network. Three degrees at Earlton at 735 with overcast conditions, but look at the contrast. Three degrees for Earlton. 
You go three degrees at Timmins, two at Yerko Falls, one at Cochrane, the freezing point between Smooth Rock and Capus Gasing, minus 13 with snow at Moosonee. Three degrees, minus 13, and minus 12 over at Hearst as well. That's a 15 degree temperature difference between eight hours of travel. I'll leave you now with more regional observations and some webcam pictures from around the neighborhood.